Hey guys and girls, it's Randy here back in the fancy den. We are partying tonight, big time. We're doing some electronics, fun party stuff with electronics. You don't need booze and everything else that you, no, we just got electronics here for our party. But we do have a special guest, uh, kind of a special night. My nephews are over. And I'll bring them in right now so you can see them. Uh, first, we got my nephew Tommy. Hi. He's the oldest. And how old are you? I'm 12. Tommy's 12. And then we got Hunter. Little Hi. Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> and how old's Hunter? 10. T Hunter's 10. Uh, they're here to check out. They're pretty interested in our electronic stuff. So I brought up the old PlayStation 2 to them. And they were pretty jazzed up, so I figured I'd show them a little bit what's going on, of what little bit, obviously, I know about it, but I uh, figured make a video for it, make it fun for all. Why not, right? We all get to maybe learn something and live a happy, better life. So, is what we got here is a big old fat Mr. PS2, and this guy is... Not spinning, not reading the disc, it's not doing anything. I got lights are on, but nobody's home pretty much. So, so what we're going to do first, I got the top case mint cover off of it. Just four little screws on that. Get that guy popped off. And again, this has actually something really neat that is uh, not seen by many people, guys. This on here, right in the very center, if you take the screwdriver, is one of them neodymium magnets. Now, the neat thing is, is that these are made to hold, actually they float when you put the disc in, and then this actually locks in to this piece here. If you look, it's another magnet, a stronger one, and it locks it down so that the disc is held right onto this. And then it spins, because it spins quite fast. And I'm talking like like 3,000 revolutions, you know, per minute and that. And like some big numbers going on. Like as fast as like a grinder or that, or my, my Dremel on high. Which is, that's fast, you know. It's cooking. So, basically you've got this off. Just going to try to clean it up. I'm going to try to clean the eyeball. Because you know how that is, you get something in your eyeball, you can't see, well, you got to clean your eyeball. But we're not going to use saline solution, we're going to use something a little different, but it's IPA, or rubbing alcohol pretty much, but you're going to want to use 90%. Um, you're going to want to use a high percentage rubbing alcohol with this, because the other stuff is obviously cut 50-50 with water, and you don't want water near electronics, if it makes sense. So... This little area, oh, I wanted to show you guys too how this, it's going to be hard to tell. I'll try to zoom in, try the new zoom in feature if that's even possible. And uh, see, give it a test, see how it works. Oh, it is going to work. How nice. Wow. Fancy. Zoom in feature to this. And to pop this one off, again, this is the fat guy right here, the PS2. Um, this ribbon here that you see. Actually, I got it wired off to the side case here. And here's the two buttons for the top piece that comes out. And instead of having this dangling around, I uh, it hangs in there just like this. I pulled the two screws out and wired it to it so it doesn't get... I mean, it looks like the thing's been through a couple wars or whatever anyway. Or it's been at the bottom of your pocket for a week, don't it, guys? Yeah. That ribbon there. That looks uh, about pretty hammered up. But anyways, here we got, uh, this thing's a little tricky to get off. And the plastic is, uh, it isn't the best plastic around. But it's, what I found is there's a tab right here, if you look, right in there. On this side is a little tab. But the key to it is the two little tabs on this side. If you get these two first. Then you can kind of lift and then pull it out. And if you do it from the other side, what is it catching on? Oh, it's catching on the little center. Yeah, you got to tip it a little bit too. It's, it's tricky the way it fits down in there. Um, 
if you go from this side, the two legs hold it in, and then this little lip here catches on the center, and you'll fight with it to get it off. So you just want to be delicate with it. I always would say to start on this side, get the two tabs, get it popped up a little bit, hold your position, come over, get the third side, third clip. They actually clip to the outside, so you want to push them in a little bit and pop it, give a little tip toward the inside, and then pop it out, and it's done. And that's there basically to protect the most important and the fanciest stuff we got going on here. And that is our eyeball, the LED, the laser diode, which is hooked up and it actually spins. While it's spinning, it's using that laser and it's technically reading the fine print that we can't see with our eyeballs off of the laser. Pretty, pretty wild stuff, huh? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. But they didn't teach you that in school, did they? No. Nope. So, uh, just real quick here. I do have uh, a thin example also that is not working. We're hoping between the two of them, we can get both of them working for these guys here. Uh, if you see here, we got the, the thinner version. Now, the fatty guy, the fat one here, these sit actually upright. Um, when you got them hooked upright, they set like this, and your CD tray comes out, and um, your disc is right there. You pull it out and push it back in with the new disc. These are always are meant to lay flat. So, and you hit the hit the eject button. The top flips open. I think we all about know that. That's about the difference between the two versions. Uh, obviously, this little this fat guy, him him being the first version. Now the second version here, the only other thing is, is it's missing this, and that would be the power supply, uh, and that's what the power supply is doing, is you can't just take your unit right here, even this unit, you can't take it and just plug it right in the wall, because the big juice coming from the wall will just send this thing to shreds, it'll make all kinds of noise, if you touch it, you freaking wet your pants, you know, stuff like that, you'll get shocked and wet your pants, and Nobody wants to wet their pants, right, you guys? No, it's, no, it's, it's, it's silly. We don't want to do that. Yeah. So we got to be safe, you know. But it'll come that point in time when you do shock yourself real good where you wet your pants and you'll know it. So we don't want people wetting their pants around here, but we don't hate people that do it either. We understand, right? <laughs> so it happens. So basically you, you got to bring that voltage down. You got to take that voltage and... and Lighten the load pretty much. We're taking the AC voltage, line voltage out of the wall, bring it in, feed it in through our power supply. Now on this fatty guy here, our power supply does. It comes in the back here and feeds on through. We got a power off and on switch. And you're gonna see what you got. That's what you got your cooling for in that also. And it switches through diodes and all that fancy stuff, capacitors, everything else, and it brings the voltage down. So, from the different needs, you got the fan that needs voltage, you got the motor here needs voltage to spin, and even your laser diodes use voltage in that. And that's about kicking along with that. Now, we did clean it up pretty good. All three of us are here kind of nitpicking at it with uh, Q-tips. And uh, got it cleaned up. We're pretty happy. We want to see what's going on with it. And the last thing we're going to do is clean the eyeball. So if you want to give me a squirt on my squirter onto my... Uh... Go ahead. Oh, here we go. Put some IPA. Just don't want it sopping. Just want enough to collect anything off of it. I technically like to get right down close, see what I'm doing. And just push it down and rub it. And rub it good. Rub it both ways. Rub it all around. Wow. Oh, that's dirty. Yeah, that's crazy dirty, isn't it? For as, as enclosed as that was, that looks pretty good, huh? That All that dirt, getting all that off of there. Nice. So, that's what we want. We'll give it one more uh, rub down just to take anything off of it. You don't want this soaked either. You want it just damp. And again, we'll push it down, put a little pressure. You ain't got to kill the poor thing. It's, it's, you know, it's just a little guy. It's a little guy. You ain't got to freaking boss him around. Just enough. That's a little better, ain't it? Yeah, a little bit. 
Very nice. Yeah, there's the second side. Looks tasty, don't it? Cotton candy? Nope. No, thank you. So we got everything else pretty much cleaned how we wanted here. Last thing I want to do before I put the top on and start moving around with it was get these rails down in here greased. If you can see them here at the end of here, doink, doink, doink. Think, think, think. Uh, we can get more fancier, and I will. Uh, I'll probably do a second video on how to uh, trim the capacitors and that that are uh, set into this unit to um, set our. It basically sets our voltages for each. You got two um, feeding heads here. You got a DVD head, so you can watch movies, and then you got your CD head, which is the one for your video games. So. We gotta set the capacitors. Also, we gotta set the timing on it with right back in here. If you look, you got a white pulley back in there, and we want to keep that um, set or adjusted right. So we get our timing set, and it also raises and lowers our uh, our apparatus here. Our mech, we we'll call it the mech, the mechanism that we use. So in alignment in that. So that's clean. Right, we got that. So how'd you guys do in school then? What? Who said they? Did I hear honor roll? Who was on that? What happened? Someone made the honor roll. I hear one of you guys. Yeah. Is that Hunter that said that? Yes. That's ninety and above. That's really good, buddy. <laughs> I'm actually I'm really proud of you, bud. That's really good. And Tommy, you made the merit. Yep. That oh, boy. Good job. That's awesome. I couldn't do that. I know. Back in school, I couldn't, I was, if I made the merit roll, I was happy. I think I might have squeaked on the honor roll once, and probably because I was a teacher's pet or something, you never know. Yeah, but, probably. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, gotta get by somehow. So, let's see here, now I was at, let me back off the zoom so you guys can see what's going on. Yep. Um. Want to set that timing set? Yeah, we'll pop a disc in or see what we got. Hopefully, we can get one of these working for you guys. So, are you gonna use the cleaning disc or just a disc? Uh, yeah, yeah, grab the cleaning disc. Okay, right here. Yeah, let me get this pop back on. I want to grease them rails, okay. but I got some silicone right here. Slab it up, get a little silicone in there. Hunter, you got gas back there or what, buddy? No. Hunter, you got gas. I'm just laughing. Hunter's got bad gas today. All right. That's lube. We got disc here. Get some power. Again, you guys know fancy Mr. Dimball. Tommy, I got this guy here. I'll have you brush him off. Do you need a, need a brush? Well, well, watch out. And your fancy yeah. toothbrush? Who's that girl? Come here, little girl. Oh, she wants to be on camera, too. Little lolly. We'll get shot. We'll take a screenshot. Won't she, girl? <laughs> She likes it too. She's having fun. She's partying with us. Yeah. Now look, I got dog hair all over the place. That's that always helps them run, don't it? Yeah, definitely the inside. There you go. And then sweep this stuff quick. Okay. And a boy. I got that on there. Power here. Threw Mr. Dimbalb over here. Mr. Fancy Dimbalb. You've seen him before. He's saying stop by saying hello. We'll run our power into it. And if anyone isn't sure what the bulb tester is, is what it does. It basically takes your power, runs it through a high watt light bulb, like a floodlight. I believe mine is 150 watt. And uh, any resistance that builds up, it'll just, the light will turn brighter instead of roaching our unit out. So, it keeps everything safe for everyone. Try to do a little bit of safety. Can't all the time, but sometimes you can. All right, there's our top. We'll pop this out. We don't need to run it with that on.
Here, want to pop the top on this? Yeah. Whoa. Put a little drop. I always put a couple drops too many. <laughs> I always flick it off. Oh, I don't have too on much it. on there. Yeah, you see that? Grab that Q-tip. That right there. Part? No, what the heck? no, it's a, it's a little. He's asking what this is going on right here. If you look real close, you'll see it. It's like a oh, almost a toothbrush, but real super thin. And it's set right into the disc. And that's to help clean the head, is what it does. But is what I seen was this spot right here. I wasn't real happy with having that on there. Something going on. Get it cleaned up. Disc is in. Like I said, you can run it. You don't need this whole top on here. We're going to put this on, lock it down. You'll feel it cinch right up. And we'll give her a shot and see what happens here. Power to it. There we go. Okay, TV on. You're going to help me plug this together, Tommy? Yeah. You said it's hooked up in the back? <laughs> TV is not on. The TV is not. There we go. TV. <clears throat> TV looking like it wants to work, or is that going to be next on the chopping block? What's going on? No signal. No signal. No signal. So we didn't... It looks like we're going to be doing some overtime again. Putting some time in here. Get this thing working and running. Won't be just as simple as a disc cleaning. Let's clean uh, it. Usually the disc cleaner will... Show you what your problem is. If we, it'll show through the. Uh, usually, you'll read something. You won't have no signal going on. Right now, we got no signal even. Um, I know past disc cleaners I've had have uh, tracks on them, base tracks and everything else, left, right channel and center tracks to set your uh, volume. So your surround sound system and all that stuff. I'm gonna check it again if it's. Okay. Yeah, have I got the right component thing going here? Here, I'll show you. See if I can uh, let you guys take a look at that. And not I just rotated them a little bit. Not rotated them, I only turned them. Yep, still no signal, huh? Yep. Hmm. Yeah. That ain't making sense. Could be the disc. Want to grab that, uh, just a disc. Out of there, grab anything. Just something crummy, not like a good one. It, it don't much matter though. Let me get this thing open. Again, this just pops right off. Let me get you straightened up here so you can see and enjoy what we're enjoying. Hunter, the bathroom's upstairs if you need it. <laughs> Try this. Did it clean it? Yeah, you can fire that right back in. Put it right back in there so it don't get dropped. Or... Okay, so that's actually on it. I thought something fell on it. Okay. It should be hit the eject again to close it. Whoop, see what happens. Put the saw to it. Yeah, you gotta, that's what the key is to have that darn, that ain't spinning right. I want to open it and start that over. Wish it wouldn't take off like that. How can I, can I just shut it off? 
have to set it on it. I just want it right. That's a little better, Ant. There we go. Nothing, huh? Is it all the way plugged in? Yeah. I'm, I'm getting absolutely not a blip. Um, let me check my inputs again. Maybe go to HDMI. It would be... Component. It should be component. It's either component or HDMI. No signal. Nothing. Yeah, that's the problem that with this thing. Uh, HDMI. Or did you have it on there? Or, HDMI is to run my... Uh, yeah, or the cable. Okay. So. Oh, yeah, we're on the ball tonight. Got her all nailed down. Yeah, that's TV. Oh, that's... uh. Antenna TV, so. Well, we'll get it figured out. We'll be right back. So we don't bore you guys with our jibber-jabber. Talk to you guys in a minute. All right, and we are back. Having, uh, you know what I forgot is uh, we're not getting any startup uh, screen. Got all my connections made. No startup screen going on. The uh, screen on your TV, it says Sony PlayStation goes wow. And it tells you your fancy connection and all that. This thing doesn't even seem to fit in there very right. So is what uh, I got to do is get further into this and uh, see what's going on with there. But I didn't want to leave you guys hanging. Uh I am losing my two compadres here. Tommy, Hunter, you guys are heading out. Yeah. So, but I'll say goodbye to goodbye. everyone. And see I'll ya. see you guys. Good job on the merit roll, Hunter. With the honor roll. That a boy. Keep that up. That's, yeah, that's is, was it easy or did you put in a lot of hard work to get it? I only missed one thing. Homework. Really? You, were, did, you worked real hard at it, huh? The homework that I was absolutely That's awesome, buddy. Bye. All right, well, Bye. we'll see you guys. And finally, we'll wrap this session up with a uh, tip of the day. And the tip of the day is a real simple, easy one. It's uh, just plastic screws. Little screws like this that screw in the plastic. Some even screw into your cheaper metals in that. But uh, basically, when you're starting your screws, first, you don't want to have a big honking. For a tiny screw, you don't want to have a big honking screwdriver like this because you just have no feel for the screw that feel if you're stripping it out or what you're doing because you're just overpowering it by accident because you you got such a big grip on it you take a screw a little screwdriver to work on the littler screws and that helps get your feel for it but when you start you're uh basically the threads are just cut it's just a hole and then they just screw it right into plastic but you don't want to start a second one with new threads, and then the third time you take it out, put it back in wherever. Now, now you got a whole bunch of different thread linings cut through like this, through that hole. So is what you want to do, you want to line it up, get your hole lined right up right where you want it, and back it off. Back it off. Go backwards. I know it's wrong. It don't feel right. And all of a sudden, you'll feel it click. And once it clicks... You, is what you did, you come to the top, kind of like this. If it's set, I'll offset it. So you're kind of, where this is the very top. Your threads are going against this, it gets to the very top, and it clicks. You feel it drop, just a little tick. And now you're back on that lower thread again, coming back up to the top. Well, if you click, and then you start turning the other way, now you're following them same threads back down instead of cutting in new threads so uh just a little tip uh i found it even works using metal when you got tap metal it works very well to uh to try that also you'll feel it uh and the bigger you know you're getting into bigger screws than that you can feel it a lot it's a lot more pronounced you'll feel it when you go backwards you know so uh I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me. If you think I deserve it and, uh, and that, give me a thumbs up or subscribe or do something. Write me a letter. Uh, anything that you think would uh, I could use for comments, 
Um, I would definitely be interested in reading them and uh, trying out how, how to figure out how to do this better, whatever would be better. I can't read your mind, so only if you leave me a comment I can tell you if uh, I can try to do something a little better. So, well, I hope I taught you something today. Thanks again, guys and gals. <coughs> Goodbye.